Good morning everybody, how you doing? And uh, you're very welcome to Two for Tuesday, which is our friend Tom over at Knife Delights. This was his uh, um, tag, open tag, to be followed up every week and we've I've really been enjoying it. We have Tom's Two for Tuesday and then my Three for Thursday and I'm getting to see so many different knives that I maybe mightn't see that often, do you know what I mean? So it's really, really enjoyable. Now, I have picked the James brand today for my two, which... And it's going to be my sort of, not my final review, you'll see them again because these are staying with me. And, and I, I, I'm not here to justify them, but what I am here to do is to just talk about brands. And, you know, this type of brand, everybody calls it the, the hip one, the, the new, for non-knife people. I think that's a wee bit loose of tongue, maybe, just for want of a better word. <coughs> these are actually very good knives. These are quite expensive, very good knives. And I'll come to that later on, but I just want to talk about the knives. I've had these for a couple of weeks now, and I have thoroughly enjoyed using them. Now, the uh, the first one is the two-bladed version, so you get a lovely spear point knife with a, the nail neck, but it goes right through, it's a hollow. Very easy if you've got dexterity problems to pull this out, not a problem. Fantastic blade. Then you also have a pair of scissors which are big and look at this pad here for your thumb. Uh, these Everything about these has been thought out perfectly. These are super scissors. Victoria Knox absolutely as good as if not a bit better in my eyes. I like them. It's light. It's in G10. It's got uh, a, a pry bar at the end, that is both the same. That's the pry bar that's at the end of it. Or whatever you want to use it for. I put a little lanyard in this one to pull out of my pocket. Because these clips, very deep carry. But these are some of the best wire clips that I have used on a knife. The G10 is fantastic. It's Spyderco quality G10. And Spyderco do good G10. But that clip, the ramp, everything about it, I absolutely love it. When it goes in the pocket... It's staying in the pocket. It's not going to jump out. So you have that one. And then you have this one. Which is the slim version. Um, which is just a single blade. And these blades are in. Let me just show you. 12C27. Fantastic blade steel for a little pocket knife. And that's what these are. They're little pocket knives. This one is maybe more um, going towards office work. This one is... Um, just, just a little pocket knife to put in your pen. I mean, you can take the clips off if you want. You don't even have to have them on and drop them in your pocket or in a wee slip or whatever. But with G10, there's no problem. It's the most hardware in one. The thing I didn't know the last time I'd done it, this is their little shield here. And I didn't know that, that stood for something that was quite weird. Well, let me tell you, it's very, very, it's such a neat answer I'm going to give you now. This is the Clovis Arrowhead, which was... Uh, it's to, it's, it's sort of to let you know that the arrowhead was man's first tool. But the Clovis was one of the first that was found in that arrowhead shape. So that's what they've done. And all their, their, um, their themed knives. Now, this here is the Ellis brand. So or the Ellis theme. I'm making a right muck of this, aren't I? <laughs> Typical party. Anyway. This is the Ellis, which is another arrowhead shape. And most of their brand, most of their, um, I can't think of the flipping word I'm trying to say. Most of the range has, you know, the different ranges are named after old arrowhead patterns. So that's what that is. A little bit more instant, very badly put by Paddy. But we'll keep rocking. So these are fantastic. I think they're a great little pocket knife. Now... Then it comes to price, and everybody has their own opinion on price. And I do as well. And everybody, not those who are maybe not so... I don't mind paying money for something that I like, right? And this is where I believe James Brand, it's either for you or it's not for you. Uh, but the nice thing about the James Brand is they're hitting a market outside of the knife community. They're going for people who are sporty, who are outdoors, who are, you know, just for somebody who, who doesn't want a big fixed blade, who doesn't want a big pen knife, you know, with all sorts, these are just simple little pocket knives that don't, 
<coughs> they don't shout, I've got a pocket knife, even when you've got them out and you're using them. They're just very simply made, simply designed for just the every man out there and not so much knife collectors. And we tend to think of everything in our head. And that's why I wanted to do this video because like this one is £119 over here in the UK. 119 I think this is 95 or 97 and I was thinking well Stephen what else have you got in that price range <clears throat> well here you go talking to Spyderco there's the dragonfly it's 90, 90 odd pound on high so very close to this and not that far you know behind this one what's the dragonfly one of the most popular knives about uh, especially from Spyderco, you get G10, 12C27. What does it matter? It's a little pocket knife. And that's what this is as well. So, it's not that dear. You know, everybody says, oh, I wouldn't pay, spend that for a pocket knife. And then you'll go out and spend it on this. So, what what is the difference? I mean, this actually is as equal to this, or as near as going to be, damn it, in slicing. But look at the difference in blade. I mean, I use this. This is, this is a great little user. I love it. But what's the difference? Look at the blade length. You get more blade on this than you do on the, the Dragonfly. So, yes, it's 12377, but let me tell you, I have, I've had this one in particular in my pocket for the last couple of days. We went shopping yesterday, and there's that usual cartload of boxes that everything comes in and uh, I caught it all up with this and there was not a slightest hesitation went through all the thick gummy cardboard that you get from a shopping center without a problem lasted me all day I gave it a little strop last night and it literally was about three strokes either side straight back to as sharp as it was it wasn't blunt at all but I always do that at the end of the night with my knives to give them a quick strop well I forgot last night but so you know that the, you know, there is the difference. That that one there is you know very equivalent to that to that there, and there's not a big difference in um, the the steels twelve C twenty seven, which has been rock wild really well. This is always good. Spider Crow always good. It's VG ten great steel, but this is a fancier looking knife than that. I think this is just a lump of plastic. I know G um, G ten is plastic, but I just think that looks more elegant than bringing this out. And this is what the, the company, I believe, in my eyes are going for. They're going for, a, they're, not, they're not trying to hit the knife community, which is refreshing, because um, some of us are a wee bit up ourselves. <laughs> and oh, I wouldn't do that, or I wouldn't use that. Well, I'll use anything. <laughs> I don't care. So, and that's what I wanted to bring out, because everybody shouted, oh, 90 odd point, I'm not going to spend that. Well, you don't, you know, buy one of those, get less blade and an uglier looking knife, because that's definitely prettier looking. And on the other side, at about 119, this is my case. This is one of the Tony Bowes ones that he sells at the uh, the big meets, signed by Tony Bowes in beautiful ebony wood. There you go. That would be somewhere around the, the range of that to buy. And that's just a case, the one that everybody moans about. But when you get a good case, you get a good case. This is a beautiful case. This is a beautiful scissors knife. I mean, them scissors are fantastic. Make no bones about it. But this is going to be somewhere near the range of this. And I think that's what I wanted to say is sometimes it's very easy to jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, they're just for the hipsters. Are they? Or are they just two good knives? There's your opposition. And they're both fantastic knives. I have these in my collection. And I now have these. Granted, I didn't have to pay for these. And I paid for these. So... I don't mind paying that sort of money for these sort of knives. And these absolutely blend in with it. I, I mean, it's just as simple as that. They blend in and they're of equal value. And I like having them all in my collection. So sometimes it's just, it's easier to knock something and say, well, you know, I'll give it a go and see what it's like. What have I got that's similar to that I'm at the same sort of price range? They're, they're pretty well priced range there. I like this out of all of them because I'm a traditional person. I like this because it's fantastic. It's a small knife I can get four fingers on. These two I can get four fingers on. And these two are fantastic knives. So forget about all the hype. Forget about the, oh, that's too dear. Go and look in your own collection like I done this morning and pick out things that are of an equal value and they do exactly the same job. So the people that like this brand, you know, that's fine. You know, let everybody enjoy what they like themselves. 
and I think I was talking about in a video, you know, we're all very, you know, I'm not going to recommend this because it's too dear. Well, what about the Dragonfly? One of the most popular knives out there. It's too dear because it's a spider co name. Well, everybody's jumping on that bandwagon with the uh, the James brand. And I am not now. I am converted. I, I'm not going to say I would run out and buy these. To be personally, I'm going to be honest here. I would buy this one first. That one I'm not so sure of. But I would buy this one first because that's the knives I like. And I would buy that first. This, I just got this in a trade this week. It's a fantastic little knife. A little dragonfly. Absolutely fantastic. But would I buy it over something like this? Eh. It's a toss-up with that one. To be perfectly honest, it's a toss-up. I got it because I've never had one of these in six years on YouTube. So that sort of shows you. It's been out there. I've known about it. But... I've never used it. So what I'm looking forward to going uh, with the James brand, I hope they're going to trust me to, to review some more of their stuff. I would like to get, you know, the, the brands that are sort of, this is my GEC. I would love to see something in this range that the James brand do. I would really love, you know, their some of their knives that are in this price range, this band. Um, so hopefully in the future, I'll maybe get some of those. Because they do a wide range. You really have to go to their uh, website and have a look. Also, my favourite knife, my Pissery Sebenza. They do knives in this price bracket and they do them in Magna Cart. On a Magna Cart. Oh, Stephen, get your teeth in. They do it in Magna Cart. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see theirs and, that, and put it up against my Chris Reeves to see what I think of it. And I, mean, I think that's the only, uh, the only thing that's... And I need to see more of the brand. But so far, honestly, I, I, I just think it's dead easy to get excited and call it hype. It's not. They're going for a different market of people who are not YouTube reviewers. We're YouTube reviewers no matter what we think of it. But knife people outside of YouTube, they buy what they think is just... I mean, they, they market this fantastically. And what's wrong with that? Why wouldn't you want a company to market what they've got and have confidence in doing it so they spend a lot on marketing so that's going to up the price of the knife but it's getting out there and that's how we all jack wolf knives look at the marketing he does but it's fantastic you're getting an amazing product for it and yeah you might have to pay a wee bit more for that marketing but that's that's what we want we want to see what we're getting before we get it they don't over exaggerate these knives they don't over exaggerate they're not trying to tell you there's something they're not they're just showing a knife for the cool dudes or somebody like me who just thinks they're a nice knife so there you go that's where i stand on james brand i, I just want to thank them so much for reaching out to a wee channel like mine and uh and giving it uh kudos to review something like this and i've enjoyed it and i've learned something about myself that's got to be good so two for tuesday done and dusted <laughs> James Brown, thank you very much indeed. For anybody out there who's saying, Paddy, you're a shill, well, you know, your opinion. I'm not. I've given an honest review on two knives. Would I buy these? And out of other things, the, the, my budget, this is quite expensive for what it is. But I've got one of those, and i got one of those. No more expensive. So, my opinions are changed on the James Brown, and I hope to deal with them further. And they do, uh, one thing I've seen on their uh, website, they do that fancy little, um, uh, like, carpet colour, lino colour knife. It's, <laughs> I, just, I don't know why I stay on here. I've no idea. <laughs> it's the work knife. You know, with the wee blades, the, the, the pull out and put back in. <laughs> I'm away. Have a great Tuesday. Thank you very much. And thank you to James Brown. And thank you for you to listen all the way through if you did. You may as well hit subscribe. You're mentally, you're not all there mentally anyway. Bye-bye. <laughs>